did eat angel's food. He sent the meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to make a meatless chili. To go alongside that, we're going to have an old-fashioned Johnny cake, which is kind of like a corn meal, cornbread type pancake to go along with our chili. And for dessert, we are going to make coffee pudding. This is a very simple meal that you can do any night of the week for your family. We're going to start with the chili because it needs to simmer just a few minutes. Now this is a meatless chili. So this is one of those that's, if you're vegetarian, it's perfect. If you just simply like to have meatless meals one or two nights a week, it's a very easy, healthy, delicious alternative to a meat-filled chili. And we're going to start uh, with a couple of cloves of garlic. Just smash it with your knife and then mince it. You could use the pre-minced uh, up chili if you have it or a, a garlic press, which I have one somewhere, but we'll just do it with our knives since we're only going to have a couple of cloves. Two cloves of garlic. If you like more, then by all means, you can do more. It's up to you. We're not going to put that in that oil first, but we're going to chop it first. Now, I've got a big pot with a little bit of olive oil, canola oil, whatever you have on hand, uh, heating up because we're gonna saute some onions and a green pepper. Now this is one of those meals that if you have a red pepper, you could use a red pepper. Uh, you could use roasted red peppers if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna use the green pepper, but you can mix it up however uh, you want to, whatever you have in your pantry. But this is a Mexican type dish, chili, you know, a Southwest Mexican sort of in its flavors. And green peppers and onions are just prevalent in that kind of cooking. One medium yellow onion. Now, if you don't have a yellow onion, you have a white onion, feel free to use it, whatever you have on hand. But we're gonna chock it full of vegetables because that's what's gonna make it healthy and nutritious. And this onion's gonna make me cry. Woo. Strong onion. Use my little food scooper. It's got a bench scraper. I've gotten some emails from people wanting to know what this little tool is. I have had it for years. But it's called a bench scraper. It's a baking tool, actually. But I use it for moving chopped up vegetables. And it works perfect for that. But it also is great for cutting dough and that kind of thing. Or, you know, clearing off flour when you roll out your doughs. I find cooking tools, oftentimes, my eyes are watering are very versatile in that you can use them in more than one application. I have one beautiful green pepper here that I'm going to chop up. I'm just going to cut out the seeds and the membrane. If you had a red pepper, I certainly would put a red pepper too in this or instead of the green pepper because I just, I like red peppers, but it has a completely different flavor. There are different types of red peppers. There's pimento red peppers and uh, you know, of course, chili peppers and some things that are red. But the typical red pepper that we see in the grocery store truly is just a mature green pepper. I grow them in a the garden in the summertime, and I'll use the green peppers, but I always leave some on the vine and let them ripen up to their beautiful red sweetness. So the red pepper that I use is really just a mature green pepper on the vine. And they're delicious, sweet, take on a completely different flavor. Have you ever noticed how many different colors peppers come in? I uh, was planting the garden season. We were looking for plants one year with my mom, I was, and we found a chocolate pepper, green pepper plant. It was brown, and then we've had purple ones and all kinds of colors. You know, that's something you could do at home if you've got a flower pot on your back porch grow a plant of some sort that, gr that has the vegetables in it. Doesn't have to be flowers. I use flower pots for herbs. But you could put you a pepper plant in one and a tomato plant in another and have your fresh vegetables in the summer. I love gardening. Love to eat those beautiful fresh produce. We're gonna put in our two cloves of garlic. I don't like to add the garlic until I have something else in that pot because I don't want to burn the garlic. And garlic will burn on you very, very quickly. We're going to saute our peppers and onions 
until they are softened. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt, about a teaspoon or so, because we're gonna be using some canned products that have the salt in them. And some fresh ground pepper. Always, if you've ever watched this program, you know I love pepper. There are very few things I don't eat pepper in. I love it, absolutely love it. it tastes so good. Gonna let that soften. This is a delicious recipe that, um, you know, maybe you just, you know, we all need to watch our diets and what we eat and don't eat. And this is a healthy alternative. Now, I love chili with beef in it, love it. And I love turkey chili and chicken chili and all kinds of meat in my chili. But sometimes I want to just have something that is lighter and healthier but yet still delicious. We need to cut back some on, you know, maybe some red meat here and there and that kind of thing in our diets. And this is absolutely delicious. And you know what? When you let it simmer, you're not going to miss the meat. We're going to get the protein from beans because we're going to replace the, the meat with extra beans, which I personally really, really like a lot of beans in my chili. So that's perfectly fine with me. At first, I thought my husband, you know, because he's a major chili eater. He loves chili. And he's one of those that, you know, when you have a recipe, don't change it. Absolutely don't change it. Uh, you know, just some things that I cook, if I change anything about it, he won't eat it. He just gets real upset. But this particular chili, after he tried it, he said, you know, I believe I like that just as good, maybe even a little better than the chili with the meat in it. So there you go. For all you ladies or men out there that have someone in your family that thinks you cannot have a meat-free meal, this is one to try them on. You could serve this on its own with cheese or sour cream or whatever you wanted, but you could also, like I do chili. I love my chili over macaroni or spaghetti. You absolutely could put this over macaroni or spaghetti and make it just like you would your normal chili, a chili mac type product. I've got about half a teaspoon of cumin, and I always put the spices in my food, whatever I'm cooking, before I add my liquid. Because you've heard me say it on here, but maybe you've missed it. When you put your spices in before you add all your juices, the oil that I'm sauteing the peppers and onions in brings out the flavors of the spices and it's what you call blooming the spices. And it really does make a big difference in the final outcome of your product as to uh, the flavors, the, the, the intensity of the spices is much more so when you bloom them in the oil before you put the rest of your products in. We're gonna take a quick break. I'm just gonna let these saute for just a second. And when I come back, we're gonna wrap up the chili and we're gonna start on our Johnny Cakes. I'll be back with you in just a minute. Welcome back. Now our onions and pepper and garlic are sauteing away and we are going to add the rest of our ingredients to our meatless chili. I'm going to go ahead and turn that down because at this stage it's pretty much cooked in the sense of what needs to be cooked. We're just going to heat through the rest of the ingredients. I have one can of black beans which I love, and you can mix up the beans in this recipe any way you want. I have two cans of kidney beans that I've drained. You could use light kidney beans. I like the dark red because I just think it looks prettier. Doesn't that look beautiful? It's so good and so good for you. This is a four ounce, a little small four ounce can of diced green chilies. If you don't like the spicy, you might use half that amount or you know, eliminate them all together, but that's a different kind of heat. It's different, it hits you in different places on your mouth, in your mouth, and it's a different kind of flavor and texture, and it's just simply delicious. I love the little green chilies. And this is two 14 ounce cans of fire roasted diced tomatoes. 
I love the fire roasted tomatoes and I use them so often in so many different recipes. It adds a smokiness. It is just simply delicious. And that's about it, except for one more thing. Now this is up to you. If you like spicy, add some hot sauce. If you don't like it, then don't. This one is an optional ingredient. I do, I'm gonna add about 10 drops or so. This particular uh, hot sauce is pretty spicy. And that's all you need to do, turn it on low and let it simmer. If you are wanting to have dinner ready when you come home, put that in a crock pot, put it on low and let it simmer, you know, for about four hours on low. Or if you really, if it's on low, you really could leave it all day long and it would be fine and you would have dinner ready when you get home. I would saute the onions and peppers first, but then you could put it in your crock pot and it would be fine to just let it go all day long on low or just let it simmer for about 30 minutes on top of the stove. That's really all it needs. And then you're done. Let me get these dishes over here. Now, we are gonna make a Johnny Cake. And I don't know where the name Johnny Cake came from, but I do love them. And the first place I had them was uh, several years ago at a restaurant, and I just fell in love with it. I love cornbread, and I thought, wow, this is, easy and quick and I, I just kind of tweak to what I like, the recipes that I found and just sort of developed what I like in my cornbread and it's just fabulous and I love them. Now I have a pan here, a skillet. If you have one of the flat griddles, absolutely use your flat griddle on this and you can make them quicker and easier. I'm heating my oil to about medium medium high, this is a good way to test your oil. See, that's not ready. I put my spoon down in there and there are no bubbles coming up around it. That's a good way to tell if you don't have a thermometer, a good way to tell if your oil is ready. But we gotta get our batter together, so we're fine. We have got, this is easy. We have one cup of flour, just, and then this is one of those times I'm using all-purpose flour. Uh, not all-purpose, excuse me, self-rising flour. Then I have one cup of cornmeal. This is a white cornmeal. You could use yellow if you wanted to. It's up to you. I have one stick of butter that I have melted and slightly cooled so as not to curdle my eggs, because we're gonna add an egg. I have one egg. I'm gonna beat it up a little bit before I put it in my mixture there. Get a fork. Break the yolk and just kind of beat it a little bit. You don't have to overdo it. Just kind of beat it up just a little bit. Stir that together. Let's put that up here. We're gonna make a cornbread batter. Kind of, I like to sort of stir that before I add in my other ingredient. Buttermilk, this is um, low-fat buttermilk. It's about one and a half cups. I would start with one cup and see where you are on your batter. You want this to be about the consistency of a good pancake batter. If you've ever made pancakes, then you'll know what I'm talking about, but I'm gonna show you. You want it to be not thin, thin, but you don't want it to be real thick either, and I actually believe that's gonna be good. That's about one cup. I always, you know, I say this and it, and it really truly does depend on the humidity of the day. If you have a really dry day where it's just super hot and dry, you're gonna need more liquid. But if it's a warm uh, environment or maybe it's rainy or it's just a very humid environment in your house, then you're gonna need less liquid because your flour will have already absorbed some of the moisture from the air. We'll let that set for just a minute, but, and then we might need to add some more, but we'll see. This is a cup and a half of shredded Monterey Jack and Colby blend. You can use whatever kind of cheese you like, because I like, I'm gonna see that, that cheese made it a little too thick, so I'm gonna add some more buttermilk. I'll show you what you want at the end. Buttermilk is thick, so you wanna just kinda work it in and see where you are. I believe that'll be good. You don't want it too thick because we are gonna fry these in our oil. And I love them, I think they're just delicious. And I believe that will be perfect. 
So let's get going over here. Now, let's check our oil to see if it's hot. That ought to do about right. You see the little bubbles down there? That tells me that that's hot. And that's what I want. You want to add about, I don't know, this little label's probably about a fourth of a cup depending on how big or small you want them. You know, sometimes I make little silver dollar pancakes and sometimes I make big pancakes. It's the same thing with this. It's a little hot. Let's turn that down just a little because you want it to cook all the way through. You see how it just, when I put it in the oil, it doesn't run everywhere. It kind of stays together. That's what you want. It takes just a couple of minutes. It doesn't take long at all to fry these, and you're gonna do them in batches. You're not gonna do them all at one time. Mm-mm-mm. Be careful flipping it. Take your little spatula. Flip it away from you, because you do not want to burn yourself. And you want them to be golden on all sides, just like that. I'll turn my heat down just a little bit. There we go. Takes about a minute or so on either side, on both sides. If you want them to be a little thinner, a little, dense, a little less dense, then you could add some more of your buttermilk, however you want them. I'm just gonna keep frying these little Johnny Cakes, and then when I come back, we're gonna get these out of the skillet, and we're gonna make our coffee pudding, and then we'll put this whole meal together. I'll be back with you in just a minute. Support the puck. Do I have to tell you this? And we're getting killed on the board. Hello. This is your territory, Grimson. Do your job. Grimson. Hello? Oh, hi, honey. What? Now? All right. The itsy bitsy spider. Climbed up the water spout. <laughs> Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. <laughs> and the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. I love you, Daddy. I love you too, sweetheart. Do the magic in the young girl's heart. Hey, it's my girl. Love. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Battles aren't won solely on the field. Battles are won within. Over enemies of fear. Enemies of doubt. In that place where promises are kept. In the heart of every Marine, you'll find a promise. A promise of battles won. Hey, Travis. <laughs> Get some friends, loser. <laughs> Bro, you all right, man? Yeah. Yeah. 
see you around. Yeah. Character. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Welcome back. Now here's our little cakes, our little Johnny cakes. I just fried them up over the break and this is what they look like. They're just like little mini, uh, little patties or fried cornbread is what they are. I, I believe, and I stand to be corrected, but I do believe the name Johnny cake came from the Civil War. Back in, uh, during the Civil War when the soldiers had to use whatever they had that was flat to fry up the cornmeal into cakes that they could transport with them is the story that I heard. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but it makes for an interesting story. Now, our chili is done, and look at this, how beautiful that chili is. You know what, and you could, if you wanted to, you could add some corn kernels to this if you had some either frozen corn or fresh corn. You, by all means, could add some corn kernels to that chili and it would be delicious. And I just like these little, little pots to serve it in. It's just a pretty little pot. If you wanted to, you could sprinkle a little cheese over top. Some people like cheese over top of their chili, or you could put some sour cream, uh, chopped scallions, whatever that your family likes. Now, we're gonna do the pudding. And let me tell you what, I, what I've already done. You need to get one and a half of these jars of marshmallow cream in the uh, bakery aisle of your grocery store. And you're gonna melt this over low heat on your stove with one and a half cups of coffee. So you've got uh, about a cup and a half or so of the marshmallow cream and one and a half cups of coffee. Melt the marshmallow cream in the coffee and put that in the refrigerator to cool down before you proceed on with the recipe. All right, now here is what your mixture will be. When you melt the um, marshmallow cream, if you don't have marshmallow cream and you just have marshmallows, that's fine. You can melt the marshmallows over low heat with the coffee, about equal parts, one and a half cups or so. In this container, I have one eight ounce container of the frozen non-dairy whipped topping that I have thawed mixed with about a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Now, if you wanna use heavy whipping cream and whip it yourself, that's perfectly fine. Add about a, you know, if you're gonna use heavy whipping cream, I would put about a teaspoon or so of sugar and whip it to stiff peak stage. For me, this is good, this is the extra creamy and it's easier than whipping cream. But if you wanna do the whipping cream, by all means you can. You want to fold in, I'll show you what I mean by fold in, your coffee mixture into, you see how I'm just taking my spatula and turning it over just to gently incorporate the coffee mixture into my whipped topping. And then you're gonna to wanna to refrigerate this so this is one of those things you could easily do a day ahead of time if you wanted to. And it's just like a little, uh, just a little, you know, pudding type dessert for your family. And then take your, cool it. I'm, I don't have time to cool it right now, but I would put this in the refrigerator and then serve it in your pretty little parfait glasses. If you have a chocolate bar that you want to shave over top, absolutely. I have some little mini chocolate chips because chocolate and coffee just go fabulously together. So I'm gonna add some little mini chocolate chips because to me, chocolate and coffee are a match made in heaven. They are just simply delicious together. So those are just some quick, easy things that you could do for your family any night of the week. This you absolutely could make a day ahead of time. Put that in the refrigerator and let it cool down would be delicious. We have our wonderful uh, meatless chili 
We started out with a sauteed onion and pepper and garlic. Then we added a can of black beans that we drained and two cans of the dark red kidney beans that we drained and one little small can of the diced green chilies. Fabulous little uh, meatless chili with some fire roasted tomatoes, diced tomatoes, some cumin and some chili powder. Let it simmer. You could put that in your crock pot and let it go all day long. I just topped mine with a little bit of the Monterey Jack and Colby cheddar, but you could do sour cream, chopped chives or scallions or whatever you wanted, however you like your chili. You absolutely could serve that over pasta, which is my personal favorite way to have chili over spaghetti. You could do that with this too, just like you would your regular chili or have it in a bowl just like this. You could serve it with some tortilla chips or you know whatever you have, some, um, some of the little uh, corn chips that you can get in the store, whatever you, however you like your chili. Today we have chosen to serve it alongside these wonderful little fried Johnny Cakes, which are basically a cornbread type mixture that we shallow pan fried in a skillet because it's quick and easy and it's delicious. We made a basic cornmeal mixture and we added some cheese to it, some shredded Colby and um, Monterey Jack cheese. You could add some grated onion in that if you wanted to add a little onion flavor, sort of like a hush puppy. If you wanted it to be like a hush puppy, add a little bit of a grated onion in there. That would be absolutely delicious. Those are wonderful served warm or cold with a little bit of butter over top of them. Fabulous alongside your chili. Here's just some quick examples of some easy recipes that you can do for your family any day of the week. Thank you for joining with me and I'll see you next time on Everyday Manna.